people got there first. I, okay, yeah, I'm sitting in the right seat tonight. Change it up for excitement. <laughs> oh, I'm excited. Well, I, got, <laughs> yeah, really. well, I got moved over here. Yeah, no, I'm uh, called altering your perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Everybody what? What? Everybody set? <clears throat> Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the uh, Tuesday, December 4th meeting of the Weathersfield Planning and Zoning Commission. Would the clerk help me with the roll call, please? Uh, Chairman Harley. I am here. Clerk Roberts is here. Mr. Hughes is not here. Mr. Oikel. Here. Uh, Mr. Hammer, not here. Mr. Homicki. Here. Mr. Dean. Here. Mr. Allard. Here. Mr. Silver. Here. Mr. Edwards is not here. Ms. Antoniak. Here. Okay. All right. So it would seem we have eight of us. Everybody's participating. First, first item is uh, item 3.1. This is a public hearing for application number 2002-18-Z, Tucker Lee, seeking a special permit in accordance with section 5.2.A.2, mixed use, and section 6.2-D5, parking space reductions. Uh, at 245 Main Street, would the applicant join us at the microphone? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to recuse myself from this All right, thank application. You. Thank you, Rich. All right, so this is a uh, this is a public hearing. We're going to ask the applicant to uh, present the the project, what they are looking to do, and what they're seeking. And uh, the commission will have a dialogue with them, ask them questions. When we feel uh, we're comfortable, we're going to turn around and, and ask the public for their input on the application. Uh, go back with the applicant again and have further dialogue. Uh, if at that point we are comfortable as a commission to close the hearing, we will do so and move on to deliberate and decide on the application. That's how the process works. All right. So with that, if you would introduce yourselves and then uh, describe the project and what you're doing. Of course. Uh, good evening. Uh, I'm Tucker Lee, uh, and this is my fiance. Uh, Hi, I'm Marcy Berman. Nice to meet you. Um, We've been looking forward to uh, speak to you on our uh, proposal for a while. Um, ever since we bought the house, we've been looking forward to uh, revitalizing it, bringing it back to its former uses. Um, as iterated, uh, to iterate the letter of intention, we want to bring it back to mixed zoning to match what the house has been used for. Um, the north side will be, the first floor will be commercial based, um, and the uh, the second floor right above it will be residential. The south side, both first and second, will be used for, um, for office space. Um, as for our business, um, which is uh, going to be selling small wares um, used by local artists, vendors, uh, or secondhand sales, um, it will only, the business hours will be no earlier than 10 a.m. and no later than 8 p.m. Um, there will be no delivery trucks for mass orders of merchandise. Um, most of our products are picked up by us um, and brought over to the house. Um, we have a letter of approval from the historic district for signage. Um, we've also brought uh, our architect and civil engineer with their plans if you have any questions for them. Um, we hope that we've addressed any potential um, concerns adequately um, and have enough approval to begin the permitting process and um, be able to get a temporary certificate of occupancy in order to open our doors for the holiday season. All right, thank you. Uh, the, the question, um, Peter, did you have a chance to review this? Did you have any comments? I didn't see them in the package. There, you do have a, mem a memo from me, but if you notice at the end of the memo, um, I indicated I would make every effort to review the uh, actual site plan. Uh, both the town engineer and I have not been able to do that yet, uh, given uh, our time constraints. So um, you do have a memo for me which summarizes the project, but we have not had a chance to look at the uh, engineered site plan. So the last uh, application, et cetera, was for residential use, correct? Um, and where I'm heading here is historically, how was it used and how was the parking accommodated? So there historically uh, was a parking lot in the back there. Um, in relatively recent history, by relatively recent history, uh, 10 years or so. Um, so um, that parking was removed uh, at a point in time when Comstock Ferry wanted um, some outdoor uh, landscaping beds to showcase some of their uh, heirloom um, vegetables and flowers. Um, so the area behind the house 
at one point had a, a parking uh, associated with some of the business uses of this property. So the, the wrinkle here is recently uh, the, the new buyers requested a, a zoning letter from the zoning officer uh, requesting conver converting it back to single family residence. Um, so because of that, we've had to have them resubmit to change the use um, to residential and commercial, um, necessitating also uh, that the parking lot be brought back so there's parking uh, available on site to support the uh, the use of the property is that parking adequate i th i think that's for you to determine uh, it does not meet uh, the calculations required by your zoning regulations so they are asking for uh, a reduction in the number of parking spaces uh, that would normally be required so did they uh, also uh submit some of the documents they were supposed to submit and an explanation of uh, maybe parking or getting neighbors to provide parking? I'll, I'll defer to the applicants on that. I, I'm, I'm not aware of that. But, but you do have uh, a, an 11 by 17 set of drawings that I can see in front of Tom that shows a conceptual site plan. And then the second and third pages are the architectural uh, plans for the building. And then you received also a full, uh, well, I'd, I'd say another reduced set of actual engineered site plans, um, which take the concept and actually specify how they're going to do that, what the materials are, how they're going to take care of stormwater, that kind of thing. So you have two sets uh, of drawings there that you, you should be looking at. We, so, we'll hold the hearing, though, and then maybe continue it because you guys haven't been able to respond to us. How do you think that's, that's up to you. I think you should hear the uh, presentation and then determine if, you know, uh, but uh, as I say, um, we have not had a chance to review it. So <clears throat> just to kind of get the history um, out, laid out, do I understand that the the parcel had parking at one time when it was in fact contiguous with the other parcel and and that when it was all one big property the owner removed the parking behind the home and then when they divided the property it effectively got divided out without any parking behind it that's correct there, there, there is an easement um, that's you should have also received in your um, document package which sort of lays out um, the intent to share the driveway and to allow um, access to the back of this property across the Comstock Ferry property. So there was an intent uh, to make sure at some point in time, depending on how this property got used, that there was the ability to access that parking area. So I was going to go there next. It, um, I don't know. I got the impression that this was recent. Is it not recent? Did this take place, this easement? Coming yeah, it, to being at the same time as the, uh, the land split? It is relatively recent. I don't have the document right in front of me, but I think you might have a date. There might be a date stamp on the first page yeah, it's at it. the top. No. Um, but I, I, it's probably here somewhere because I actually got back where it's executed. I did actually yep. get you know that impression. Yep. That's which, correct. Um, which was kind of straight there. It's November 18th. There you go. Okay. So. Which seems kind of strange. When was the property subdivided? I was I was kind of surprised by the fact that we were getting an easement for effectively no monetary value between two properties that have been subdivided. Just okay. One way or the other, there's an easement to the property at this point <clears throat> across the Comstock Ferry property. One way is access that goes out, come in Main Street. So it's kind of, I, I didn't get the description real well, but it just seems to come in and out yeah, over their there driveway. Was, there was a restriction the driveway. on the parking going into, from Main Street, uh, going on Church Street. Okay. So, so you know, maybe the applicant can answer any of the questions that you heard and weren't fully answered mm -hmm. by Peter. Um, as for uh, speaking to our neighbors about borrowing their parking, uh, we have spoken to... Yeah, yeah, we've spoken to Heirloom Market. Um, they need all 26 of their spaces for their own business um, when they went through the zoning process. Uh, we were in, um, we were speaking to Trinity Church at the moment. Um, they they have their own committee, and I was unable to uh, be able to speak to every one of them at this current point, but we are still speaking. Um, so, in other words, you don't have more than the spaces you're showing us tonight? Not at this current. At, at this point. Not at this current moment. Thank you. Um, uh, the uh, other point is it's a very small store. We are not looking to have many customers at one time, uh, if that affects anything. I mean, the, the summary that they've provided suggests that the use 
uh, requires 11 spaces and they're providing eight. By the way, does this uh, reconfiguration of the back remove any of the parking that's on the Comstock Ferry property? Yeah. Be, be, feel free to introduce somebody else and, and oh. have them answer. Oh, um, uh, this is our architect, Jan Wojas. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I will distribute and, and submit the uh, drawings, and I hope that based on those drawings, we'll continue uh, explaining uh, the situation. Sure. You can just pass it, and we'll pass them down if you care. Oh, I'll just yeah. right here with this. Thank you very much. So what you're looking at is a, actually a couple of pages. The page uh, uh, labeled AL site lighting plan has a little bit more information than just the lighting. In the uh, uh, lower right corner is actual um, uh, calculation of the area, uh, as uh, Tucker mentioned before, uh, we will have a retail uh, about 800 uh, eight square feet on the first floor. Then the uh, second part of that first floor is going to be office use, which is going to be housed on the first and second floor. And then uh, part of the second floor is going to be residential use for the owner of the store. So based on the square footage, uh, office would require five spaces. The retail would require four spaces and residential use would require two spaces. Altogether, it's 11 spaces. As you look at this site plan, I'm sorry, it might be a little confusing because I overlay uh, the information about, uh, about the easement with actual layout. On the back of the uh, building, you have eight spaces, which one of them is handicap accessible. Uh, because of constraints of, uh, of the size of, uh, of existing uh, parcel, uh, we could only fit eight spaces. Maybe uh, there is a paved area uh, to the right of the building, which I think currently uh, houses two parking spaces. But since the parking spaces are not fully included within the property line, I cannot count them uh, toward the total number of spaces. I mean out near the tree? And just Correct. The west, Correct. Uh, yeah, west of the so my intention was to present to you what is the cap capability of this property, how many parking spaces we can fit uh, within the existing boundaries. Former users did have sites for parking out there, though. Excuse Former me? Former users of this building had parking spaces out there to the west of the tree. Okay. So we can utilize that. That probably would be three spaces which were missing. But as I said, I cannot calculate that because the parking spaces cross the, the property line. Property. Okay, so uh, this is about parking uh, uh, spaces uh, or capacity of the of the uh, property, and on the, um, the subject of improving the property, we are provide we have an existing ramp on the east side of of the property with the steps. Because we uh, will have divided first floor for two businesses, we, cre we are going to um, re rebuild the west uh, the porch. Doing, uh, we are going to raise the floor to be level with the floor of the, of the house and then build the ramp going toward the north side of the building. And um, this ramp is going to have about 28 feet in length. 
Uh, we also, and, and that's why I'm calling this plan Site Lighting Plan, which uh, shows also the location of three light fixtures. Uh, those are going to be, uh, if you turn the page, you will see, uh, this is uh, uh, a copy uh, from the catalog, uh, which pretty much shows uh, the light fixture uh, located on the arm on, on uh, uh, Paul, and that pole will be placed on a um, 10-inch uh, sonotube. So overall height would be about 10 feet. And uh, going back to the first page, you see circles on the north side of, of the uh, house. Those circles indicate the foot candle level at the uh, ground. So the inner circle uh, shows 0.5 uh, foot candle. The um, middle circles shows 0.2 and outside circle shows uh, 0.1. In, in my opinion that covers uh, the uh, uh, requirement for the lighting level at the parking lot and uh, also uh, as you see uh, pretends to be a, a, a historic in, in, in uh, character. Uh, more details about uh, the parking lot, uh, drainage and so on uh, will be uh, introduced to you by uh, my colleague, Ozzy Torres, uh, and uh, he also have a full package of uh, documentation about this one. But I, I will be happy to answer any questions. Historic district say this light design was fine in their approval? He, uh, I s they didn't see it yet, but we'll, we'll make sure that they, they will, uh, uh, it will go through their office. Well, but just that they advise us as well. You know, we right. have an advisory committee in the historic district. They advise us on design. So they, they will be done the within the next few days. We're, to, be, uh, to make sure... Uh, our client, uh, Tucker Lee, is very um, openly working with Historic uh, Commission. So uh, she has very close uh, working relationship with them. So far, she submitted whatever they require her to do. If I may in interject, actually, um, I also have a letter of support from the president of the uh, Historic District Commission. Um, and we, they are aware that we will be bringing up parking lot discussions to the next, uh, the next meeting. It's on the agenda. Do you have any questions? If not, I will ask uh, my colleague to continue. Go, go ahead and uh, have, him, have him continue. Sure. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, my name is Ozzy Torres. I'm a professional engineer registered here in the state of Connecticut with my offices here in Wethersfield at 63 Reed Drive. Um, the parcel is a small parcel, which is only a fifth of an acre, 0 0.21 acres. It was cut out before, as you had asked about the, the subdivision of it. It's been cut out for a while, um, but this easement has been added and, um, and it runs along the west. Uh, I'm, I'm afraid Jan was a little bit off with the north and west here, but the west portion of the parcel is the parking area. And um, it, it has a 12-foot strip that was granted to them by the Stock Ferry or the Seed Company, whatever they're called, I'm sorry. Um, it, it ended short of the southern property line and we're in the process of trying to get that extended. It just It's about 10 feet, 8 to 10 feet, uh, so that we can get the parking into, uh, we can get into that last parking space. Um, the land, as you know, slopes from the ridge of the house to the west and kind of southwest towards Church Street. And then the, the rest of it from the, again, the ridge of the house goes east towards Main Street. Um, that's not going to change. There's going to be very little anything changed to the 
character of the, of the slope of the land, except the parking lot, we graded it very flat because it is intended to have pervious pavers, uh, as does Comstock. Um, these are, we're, we're still in the process. Again, we have to introduce the, the color of the brick uh, to the Historic Commission, but I do have it here. <clears throat> This is more or less what they want to do. It's not, of course, the brick brick that they have next door. Those, um, those are much more sensitive and they may break. This is a solid block made purposely for driving on. And um, it's designed to interlock well and provide enough space between them so that it's really porous. It's a wonderful design. Now there were some raised planters and other um, gardening items at the, at the west side of this parcel, and they've been they're being removed. Most of them have been removed, um, so it's all going to be pretty much graded as we show, and I, and I will show you that. The proposed parking um, will start with some of the some of the first space will be on the. Um, the existing brickwork for the for the abutting property. It's still within our property. And then the rest of the spaces will run all the way down uh, as shown. We were a little larger than what Jan had shown because he did a sketch off of a, of a plan that wasn't that accurate. Um, and we also are showing um, a van space, which is eight and eight feet in width. So that is in compliance with ADA, ADA regulation. So um, the, the parking kind of got a little wider than we thought. It will all be flush to the sidewalk. And um, so we've got uh, bumper stops all along the whole line. Um, the pavers will be I can show you here the grading. Um, it, it is very simple. It's not a very big lot, and we've just spotted, given all the spot grades on there, so that uh, we provide just a very gentle slope to the west and pick it up with the storm catch basin. Um, I spoke to the town engineer, and we agreed that um, I could bring an overflow pipe out to the storm system up to Main Street. <clears throat> we ran through the um, storage calculations in the stone. The, the, the cross section of that of those pavers as shown on this detail sheet, you can see, calls for 12 inches of two inch stone, which is a really good base. Then, um, I think it's eight inches. 12 inches, uh, eight inches of number two, of three quarter inch, and then two inch stone. I'm sorry, it went, hold on, I can't see that far. Okay. 12 inches of, of large stone, four inches of three quarter inch stone, and then two inches of the fine eighth inch stone that uh, fills between the bricks as well. And uh, this proves to be quite a, uh, a great system for storing water. And what we do is we end up filling up all that stone area and let the overflow go out that little pipe. It's only a four inch pipe out to the street. Um, and we, we've shown that we've reduced all the flows for up to the 100 years uh, pretty, pretty drast dramatically um, to the point where we're going to, um, for instance, uh, the 100 year is 0.61 CFS presently. We're going to increase it up to 0.88, almost 9 tenths of a CFS. And then by storing it in the stone, we'll reduce that to 0.28. So we're even half of what it gets now, what comes off. So we've reduced the flows quite a bit. Um, again, those were submitted to the town engineer. I, we haven't you know, gotten a letter back yet, but we'll, I'm sure um, he'll accept most of that work. That was, uh, that's done pretty much to the standard. Um, uh, Jan had already spoken about the lighting. Uh, presently, the building has 
couple of floodlights on the roof, but they're not going to use those. There are a couple of floodlights up on the on the roof, um, and they're going to. And as Jan had said, they're going to have three poles along the way. The middle pole will will probably put the uh, handicap van sign on it. <coughs> Our plan calls it for, to be on the building, but um, historic commission may not allow, may not want us to do that, so we'll put it on on the light pole. Um, it, that'll be just fine. Um, that really covers um, everything except the fact that, we, as Jan had said, we're asking for eight spaces and not the required um, 11. Um, and if you have any questions, we'd be glad to answer them. Okay. Dan, you were going to ask him questions? You want the applicant back? <coughs> Okay. Go ahead, George. I got one want to get two. started? Do you want it of this gentleman or do you want it of the applicant? Um, the handicapped. Um, yes. <coughs> the second question, maybe it's staff I should be asking, but you could answer it too. Uh, is there any handicapped requirement to the second floor? Because that's residential on the south side. Um, it, it's typically by the number of required spaces. It's not done by the use or the floor. If, if we have 25 spaces, we required one or up to 25. Over 25, you're required to have two spaces. Over 25, so it's a matter of the number of spaces. No, no not the handicapped parking. I'm sorry. Maybe. Handicapped access to the second floor. Oh, I'm sorry. Right. No, no. Okay. I, I, I see make, now. You meant the access. I didn't make myself clear. <laughs> okay. I think we're only yeah. having access to the first floor. Right. Uh, the, as an architect, I can answer this one. Uh, in existing uh, build, uh, uh, normally when you have a business, you're supposed to provide handicap access to all levels. But in this particular case, there are some, uh, well, build, uh, the business is an existing historical building, so we have some leeway. And as long as business will provide the same type of uses uh, on the first floor as it, it is on the second floor, uh, the ADA com uh, compliance would be in place, meaning that uh, business has to provide a uh, meeting place. We, we provide the ramp, so the first floor is fully accessible. First floor will have handicap bathroom. Uh, as for the visitors, we need to make sure that uh, whoever is going to, uh, uh, the, the person is going to visit, will be able to meet that visitor on the first floor. In regards to handicap employee, uh, all the uh, features of the uh, office will have to mirror first and second floor. So there will be no reason for the handicapped person to go to the second floor. This is how I read the code. And in cases like this, as I said, this is a historical object. Uh, we will uh, uh, file for a variance. To who? To uh, building uh, uh, department. Building, uh, building official? Right. Well, through them to state building officials. Okay, you look forward to the state. Of right, and there, I, I've done it many times, floor. and I've done it many times. They have forms for that, and I, I'll just uh, fill up the form and wait for their decisions. Okay, so, so just generally summarizing, the property once was used mixed use, had parking in the back at one time when it was all one property. Access to that parking in the back used to be over the Comstock area, so access to the back is really being put back where it used to be, <clears throat> right? Um, and, and so I think that's the basic proposal, and of course everything else about the application, lighting, and, and uh, how they're dealing with drainage all needs to be looked at, and of course staff hasn't seen that yet. So um, in terms of a, an overall project, I think I get the gist of it, um, right? And uh, but we don't have all the facts from staff, and you know, I'm sure the fire marshal needs to throw 
in a review and, and other parties, right? So we don't have all those things. But I do understand that the applicant is looking for some temporary uh, situation. So I'm not clear on that as yet. So could we talk about that for a few minutes? Yeah. <clears throat> um, I actually received an email from the fire marshal. Uh, he did make some notes um, to uh, Jan. Uh, did, right. So he has reviewed them. So he has been, there is some back and forth. And, and staff needs it eventually. You know, there's enough other things where I think the whole of the application can't be acted upon tonight. But, but describe for me what you're, what you're really looking for, which is before the whole, you're actually looking for some temporary conditions? So. Right. Um, we were hoping to uh, get the approval in order to uh, ask for a temporary certificate of occupancy in order to open our business on the um, north side of the first floor. Um, like I said, our store has um, many uh, goods that would do well during the holiday season. So I don't know how the process, I, I can't remember doing this, and I'm going to turn to Peter and ask him how, how might the process lend itself to that? Uh, you're correct when you say you haven't done this before, so this is uncharted uh, territory. Typically, uh, this commission would approve a project um, if owing to seasonal conditions, such as snow and, and that kind of thing, so that the exterior improvements, uh, never mind the interior improvements, couldn't be completed. Staff uh, have, in uh, uh, certain instances, allowed uh, temp temporary occupancy, assuming the um, applicant puts up a, a bond for the remaining improvements. Um, however, this is kind of a chicken and egg. You guys have to approve this first uh, as a project. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't have a clear uh, scenario uh, and answer for you since this is not something you would typically uh, typically do. And I, and I assume you've had this discussion with the applicant. Yes. Um, there's no <clears throat> current use of the property. So the current, the current use theoretically is residential. As I said earlier, they asked for a, a zoning permit for residential use. So we could certainly give uh, a temporary uh, certificate of occupancy, assuming the building and fire marshal are okay with it for the residential aspect of it. But the commercial aspect, it's a chicken and egg. You have to approve it first. Um, in, this, in a case like this, with a specific request like this, it would, it would almost be like a phased approval. So I think you would have to think about that and how, you know, what the timing would be, what phases would be okay to access, you know. So, you know, it probably could be broken down in some way, but I think it would have to be part of a conditional approval with certain time frames and the plan would have to be kind of laid out, okay, what improvements are going to be done in order for this to be open and then what improvements would be for the uh, other occupancy. So, um that kind of would, you'd have to frame it in those, in that light, I think. Peter, if the applicant came in today exclusively asking for commercial use on the first floor, period, subject to uh, building code authorization, and because your memo references at one time it was a commercial use, that would have been a whole different story tonight. No, it would be similar. They'd have to come back to you for this. It would be similar approval to what you're you doing tonight. you still have to review the details. Right, that. right. So the other issue, the big issue, um, just while, while it was being explained to me, if you look at the plans, there is a gap on the south side uh, where the easement area is that is not encumbered by the easement. They want to use that for parking, but most importantly, they want to use it to, it looks like, to put one of their catch basins and drainage pipes in that area. Um, you can't condition your approval on the theory that someone else is going to give them a, a right to someone else's uh, property. So that issue has to be worked out before you can approve it. So that's a kind of a critical, more critical uh, thing. Um, so maybe the applicant wants to speak, speak more to that. So that's a, I don't know if the drainage can be modified so it's all in the easement area and you avoid that, or the parking can be modified so as to avoid that. That might be a, a better scenario, but it needs um, property rights to be acquired in order for the improvements as put on the plan uh, uh, to be implemented. And, and obviously, we besides uh, besides staff comments, et cetera, and um, fire marshal, we're typically looking for official notification from the historic commission that they're okay with it as well, right? Those those are the two things that I had noted before: was the easement area needed to be locked down somehow, right? Right, and the historic. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Can I just? 
Uh, I've actually been in communication with the uh, Comstock Fair Heirloom Markets uh, owners, mm -hmm. so the previous owners of the Belden House, and I have provided them with the easement information. Um, well, they're lawyers with the easement information already, so we have had some back and forth. Yeah, I can imagine that it's not, it's, a, it's an I that needs to be dotted. If they made provisions to provide this one, I can't imagine some small, because it looks like it just wasn't taken all the way to the property line, right, when they laid it out all the way to the south property line. Right. George. Another issue. Um, I saw no landscaping. And again, what was provided to us was quite inadequate from what I've seen for many, many months in this commission. And I was a little disappointed. And there's one other area. I didn't see any landscaping proposal. Maybe they've submitted it with you today, Peter, and or, yes. okay? But uh, I don't, I, there's a lot of landscaping that's got to be done there. The whole site's got to be cleared on the south side. As far as I'm concerned, most of it's old, overgrown, inadequate, and I don't know what's required, so. That's it, Mr. Chairman. Can you ask to respond on that question? So, so are there plans? Regarding landscaping, have you had that dialogue with the engineer or architect? Um, there, there are landscaping requirements with, within the zoning regulations. Uh, um, at, at the, I'm told by um, our civil engineer that landscaping had already been done for it. We were keeping everything that has been included um, in regards to what the parking lot will not remove. Um, there's, uh, there's flowers and plant life there. We are removing whatever is overgrown. There's been weeds. I been um, removing them along with the dead leaves and the soil in order to uh, to make the landscape uh, back to the condition it was before it was uh, vacated. Um, if I may add, the, around the building itself, it's all pretty well landscaped. With, granted, there are older shrubs and could be pruned and cleaned up, but um, there's plenty of foundation landscaping all around the building. It's just the portion that we're going to end up putting that paved. You're not uh, going to remove any of it? And I, <laughs> I don't think so. Removed? I think it looks pretty good. It just needs maintain, maintenance, really. Uh, I mean, there are a lot of shrubs and a lot Sorry, of. Sorry, it was down there Saturday. I didn't see it that way. Okay. Well. So, so and, and honestly, I don't know that it's so much about foundation, foundation landscaping, anyways. In the zoning regs, there's, you know, criteria to be met right, for right, landscaping right. and it's if, just if yeah. that's the case the only problem we have is that the property ends here the pavement pretty much fills that whole western portion of their property so we'd be landscaping the abutters property that's no, no, and no, no, no. south south of the new ramp you're putting in right yes. oh. That oh. part. Oh, that part. Uh, I apologize. Uh, yes, that that is in process of being removed. Um, as I said, as Azia said before, the planting beds. You know, the, all the wood was taken off. The soil is being shifted mm -hmm. to other areas. We're trying not to leave it in a spot in which it'll um, it'll cause issues or hazards. About the south side. The south where, side. Where about the west side. Yeah. The south well, side is over south here. Well, yes. The big building. Yes, the I understand. Side. You're talking. Yes, the on the south. The south yeah, yeah, side, right, okay. right? Yes, the okay. south side. We are removing those bushes in order to. Um, you have removed them or something? We, we, since we have not gotten approval yet for the handicap ramp, uh, we have not rushed to remove them, but we will remove them in order to um, accommodate the handicap ramp. But, but it's not. I'm not talking about removing them per se. I'm talking. If you are, what are you going to replant? <coughs> the commission requires a certain exactly. amount. Exactly. That's where I was we'll, going. We'll it's it's less. It. It's less yeah. about. Um, what it looks like and more about what are you planning, right? So that the application usually comes with a landscape plan and, uh, and the zoning regs have, you need X, Y, Z in a proposal and you just simply have to address, well, I'm not gonna be able to give you X, but I'll give you A. Mm -hmm. I can't give you Y or I can give you Y, perfect. I can't give you Z, but I'll give you B. Uh -huh. okay. I, I understand that. I mean, I, there is one bush that we are uh, more than happy to relocate uh, to a different part of, uh, 
we're running out of uh, land we space. We didn't show the landscaping because <laughs> well, we felt the, the like, landscaping you, was you there. You could leave everything that's on your property as is, just prune it up, and it could still technically follow the landscaping exactly. plans it's the way we would need them. It's just that we, we just need something that says. Yes, yes. Oh, my, that, my apologies. So, I mean, regardless of the plan going forward, it doesn't yeah. Yeah, right. and, and it matter. needs to be it, addressed it, in the yeah. right. All right. My, my my apologies, um, and for the state of the the current landscaping, we we just purchased it less than a month ago, and we've been working every day to bring it up to speed. And it's winter, so nobody's thinking about bushes. <laughs> you know, you know. What what is the current condition of the interior of the structure, such that one could so so? What I'm struggling with is. Um, the applicant is making a request. We're rushing through this whole process. Um, what is the status of, just so that we can be in condition to open for some holiday season, what's the status of the structure inside and building permits and everything else? We're three weeks away from the end of a holiday season. As I mentioned before, uh, uh, the previous usage of the first floor was only the north portion of it. So I would say that this area has a handicap access, has a good condition. The only improvements which we do to that area is the handicap bathroom, which we show on a plan. Also, uh, eventually, we would need to provide a fire separation because we have three different uses. And this is the communication I had with the fire marshal. Uh, the point is that uh, we would have to provide additional layer of fire-aided gypsum board between uh, 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 residential use upstairs, upstairs and uh, a commercial use downstairs. There is no requirement in fire separation between business and retail. So at this point, for Tucker to open the business uh, would be only uh, create the handicapped bathroom. Everything else is in, I would say, working conditions. And, and how does the town process work? Is that possible? Is that start all with this approval tonight? Yes. Right? And nothing else goes forward without Correct. this? Correct. She can't get a building permit from the building department uh, unless the use is approved by uh, you, even though historically it was used for commercial. There, as I mentioned, there was the wrinkle where they asked for permission to convert it back to residential. So that's where I was saying the chicken and egg uh, scenario where uh, it starts with you guys. Um, yeah, it and then goes from there. Uh, on the surface, it seems sort of simple, like, you know, if they could just open that little quadrant, I get it. But we don't see the whole picture and the whole package, and uh, I'm a little concerned about trying to cobble together some He's approval moved, right? uh, sitting at a table tonight, honestly. Um, this is a public hearing, though, so let's... let's uh, Finish with our questions with the applicant, or if, we're, or if we're ready at the moment, we can go to the public and ask. Just, just a couple of questions. To me, this is kind of an ambitious use for the building, for the size of the building. And we're to, to me, I'm looking at two different things. One is a temporary use, and one is a total approval of, of the entire project. I just want to point out that I personally, <clears throat> with the parking, parking is very scarce out there. Uh, if, you, if you go out there during the day, I mean, many times, I can't find parking. I mean, I cannot find a parking place um, unless you're going to be parking over in the Comstock property, which there's no, we can't say that that's, that's allowed. And has any consideration been given to reducing the scope of the project to allow for <coughs> adequate parking in the lot per our zoning regs? Because that is a concern that I have. I'm going to have to be convinced that uh, from the knowledge of the area, yeah. There's not going to be a problem. Um, the parking spaces calculation is based on the square footage of uh, use. So if you want to reduce the number of parking spaces, the only solution would be to reduce the square footage of the office space. That's what I'm, that's what I'm getting at. Is there any consideration given to reducing the scope of the use to bring within the parking regulations? Well... This is a business decision because if we if we reduce the size of the uh, um, 
uh, rental space for the office might not be uh, marketable. I understand, and that's something that I have to be convinced about. You know, right. Before. And I'm kind of reluctant to say, okay, we can have a temporary use if there's a problem with the overall use. We've never done that before, and it would be a first. And I don't want to give any false pretense that it's not going to be a problem, and yet money is invested in opening the business if that's, you know, if the whole project is not approved. Right? Um, you know? may, and I don't want us to, to do anything that waives our rights to say, we got to look at the whole project. Uh, we haven't, our staff hasn't looked at the site plan yet. We haven't had any comments from the town engineer. We haven't had any comments from, you know, our town planner. And that's where I get reluctant. I've never given right. approval without yeah. I, um, They're looking at the whole thing. Right, I, I apologize. I've also been speaking to the, the town engineer. I'm, um, so he is aware of what we are trying to do. Um, as for the, uh, the space, um, if, if it helps, the second floor of the south side uh, is only for file use, only for what the business would use. It will not be having any public foot traffic whatsoever, so that should reduce the amount of uh, volume and people that comes through. I'm not sure that, I have to figure that out if that has anything to do with the, with the number of parkings that are required. Like, uh, uh, the requirements. I, I mean, like, it, yes, it, it affects the number of, of technical, um, technical spaces. However, it's not going to be, um, for example, uh, a, a library in which, you know, kids would be going upstairs, their parents would be parking. This is just for the employees to use the use of their own accord. It's just that I know the parking is at a premium down there. That's, that's my concern. This will not be adding to the foot traffic, regardless of the using the first floor or the second floor. Yeah. I don't know that parking is as big an issue as uh, as you're thinking it is, I mean, every time somebody's there, they're not just going to this location, they're going to multiple places, shopping and going down the road. You could park across the street, whether or not it's allowed, in, a, in the church lot. Everybody parks there during the weekends. And that's the only, t weekends or weeknights, I suppose, would be like the two times. But other than that, I just, I just don't know that parking would be all that big a deal. And we just, we were just talking about an approval that's just north of this, where mm -hmm. parking came up, and we we actually like decided to do less work because there was no need for parking in one location just to satisfy a rule, because the street has so much shared parking that's, right in that area. That is the problem. It's just I know the area where we're talking yeah. about the parking isn't as much my experience anyway hasn't as much of a premium as it is right here. Right here, it's. I found it to be personally difficult. May I, may I come back to the point which I made on the very beginning? Traditionally, as Mr. Uh, Oikel pointed out, uh, there, there are two parking spaces which are on the north side of the building, which traditionally are, were used by the owner of, of the building. We cannot count those two because the, the, they are crossing the property line. We are creating eight new parking spaces within our property line. So if, if you look from this perspective, we're short of one parking space. Can you show where that, excuse me for a minute, can you show where those two parking spaces are located? Right here. Okay. There is a big tree. And, and they're right here. Hmm. Not not everybody on the commission is quite as um, hard about the parking, um, I just, but yeah. but but it's still an issue that needs to be discussed at length. And and, I'm, and I'll bet that those two parking spaces on the Comstock Ferry property work in the count for Comstock Ferry, um, which also probably didn't have enough parking um, on site either. <laughs> so <laughs> you know which. Can I ask a little bit about more about the use? Yeah. You're going to have one apartment, mm -hmm. a retail use, mm -hmm. 
and then an office space use. How many employees will be in the building at one time for the office space and the, and the uh, uh, retail? Yeah, at this moment, we don't have any renters uh, to give you numbers for the office space. As for the retail space, it is uh, myself and my partner. Okay. Where, will, where will you be parking? We'll be parking the residential space as it is our apartment. And then you'll have to complement the small office and relatively small retail with employees in addition to that. Yes, and, and as I've said before, it is a very small shop. We are not anticipating having more than two or three cars there for our own use. Uh, no clients would be on the second floor for that office area. You call it you know, foot, foot traffic anyway, so that'll be somewhat of a low profile square footage use. Uh, exactly. Okay. What would the hours of operation be? For, for our store, it will be no earlier than 10 a.m. and no later than 8 p.m. any day. I suspect what they'll also find is that whether Comstock uh, wrote it in, the, in their uh, easement or area or not, you know, people will share parking. You know, people will park in those two spots if it's convenient to get to the store. Uh, and um, on Sundays or on, on days when it's not that crowded in one or the other, they'll be sharing the parking behind this building and going into Comstock. Yeah, are you guys ready to hear from people in the public? Yes. Okay, good. Let's, so if you'll um, take a seat while we call people up. Is there anybody from the public who'd like to comment on this uh, proposal? Come on up. Yes, please. Thank you. And like the applicant, if you would uh, introduce yourself. Yeah, Attorney Matthew Willis for Comstock Ferry. Um, I'm just going to pass out something you probably already have. I don't know if I brought enough copies, but it's just this area that has to be, it says on the map, uh, parking easement shall be adjusted. There's a drainage improvement on that area. This hasn't been resolved. I, I, I think this, for something like this, it should be continued because the property rights issues haven't been resolved yet. And I'm not going to comment on the rest of the application. I'm just here to discuss my client's property rights. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you have any questions about that or. Uh, not not specifically because I think we kind of touched on it, and we're, you know we know it's got to you got to dot that I. All right. So I think this matter should be continued you're, you're still because of negotiating it. with them or not. Um, we just received a document this afternoon. Which document? Uh, a revised document of the easement. So I can't even comment <coughs> further on it. It's just a little premature. Fair enough. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yes, sir. Come join us. Thank you for recognizing me. Uh, first of all, I just want to say thanks to uh, all of you guys that work on the... Um, Oh, sorry, I didn't introduce myself. Thank you. I should know that by now. Um, so Paul Brady, owner of 1618 Church Street. I am directly behind um, Tucker Lee. So welcome to the neighborhood, Tucker. Um, now, first of all, let me say thanks to all of you guys for you know the work you do here and always having to listen to some of our comments, which at times aren't really polite, but I'm going to try to be brief. <laughs> um, and I, I want to say a special thank you to um, Mr. Peter Gerlewski for actually uh, explaining to me uh, this plan. Um, and the reason he had to do this was because, like some of my neighbors, I didn't receive a notice. And there's no plan. I haven't reviewed it. I don't know what it is. I have concerns. I have questions. I'm also happy that there's a new neighbor in the neighborhood and they're going to be doing great things with the building. If it was, if it was up to me and there was no concern, I'd say go ahead. But I have a five-year-old. I have concerns. I have a lot of concerns. Number one, um, you guys are familiar with uh, Old Weathersfield and how busy it gets in the summer. I've watched people park in Comstock Ferry's parking lot, which you're not supposed to do when there's no parking on Church Street and you can't find parking, any two-hour parking up on Main Street, and chop through that property, <laughs> chop, through, chop down my driveway, 
And it's like, okay, who's that person? I've also had a guy, while I was at work, made his way into my kitchen while my wife is in the living room, and my son's like, who are you? Five-year-old, remember. Um, these are, I have questions. Are there going to be any barriers in between? Um, what's, what's, what's going to, what's going to happen here? Um, any type of vegetation as far as, you know, if you park your car, you know, you back in the light at night. Um, those are all questions that I have. Um, you know, how is the drainage? Is the drainage going to be adequate so that there's no water running onto my property and probably flooding my basement? So these are all questions that, you know, I have, you know, and, you know, I'm just asking you guys to um, extend this. Um, Tucker, I hate to be the Grinch, but, um, you know, I, I do want time to review this. I do want time to ask questions, um, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, just not so long ago, I was here, and um, let me apologize to any of you if I was not nice the last time I was here because of the... Um, because of the Masonic Hall proposal that you guys wanted to, you know, that people were looking to put right next to me. I mean, you know, I had to, I'm the guy that made that long drive here, and I'm also the guy that made the long drive again today, what, what do you mean just for you this. Nice to us? You were too. Well, you know what, at times, you know, when, when the shoe's on the other foot, you know, emotions, they, they get to a point where, you know, people get passionate about certain things. And, you know, if it was just me that's, that was living there, I probably wouldn't be here tonight. But I, like I said, remember, five-year-old, um, that's, my, that's, that's my treasure chest right there. I have to protect it. So I would ask that you guys leave this open because we need time to review it as a community. I need time to review it because there are questions that I have that I, you know, I need answers to. So. Do you, do you have a screening around your property? You have, have it on the Comstock portion, right? The back yes. side. Yes. There is, so there's nothing on the, so there's nothing on the front side. So like the other, um, like when they were doing that Hallmark movie down by, okay, if I, if I was outside of the kitchen, yeah, that bright light was over there. Again, it was temporary, but I, you know, it wasn't, bo it wasn't bothering me. No one was being hurt. It's okay. But, you know, you start, you're talking about cars, and do take, you know, I want you guys to visualize this. You have Lucky Lou's, which they operate, you know, about 6, 7 o'clock is pretty busy for them. You have, um, you know, you have Village Pizza, which is pretty busy too. And, you know, it's bad enough the employees can't find parking. Now, when you get all the, you know, the visitors, and you add that mix, you know, then what? Do you think this, I'm going to ask you a question about the neighborhood here. Go ahead. Okay, you can help. Uh, do you think there's enough signage in the Comstock lot to indicate who should park there in the direction they should go to get out of it? There's not enough signage. I will say, actually, um, I don't think most people that visit Old Weathersfield understand that that's a one way. I actually almost got ran over walking on the other side. So um, I don't think people really understand, know you know, where, where, where they're driving, number one. And, you know, um, my wife and I, you know, we try to walk every morning when, you know, especially when I'm, you know, not working. And, um, you know, we see some of that crazy stuff, people driving the opposite direction um, in Comstock Ferry. And I, sometimes I don't think people know that they're, they shouldn't be parking there. Um, as it relates to the church, and their parking space, sometimes the church gets fed up of all the people that are parking there and they'll close the gate and they, they'll say, you know what, this is a, this is a church. It's confusing over So, and, and, you know, do understand this, you know, as a municipality, you can't be relying on a religious institution to provide, you know, relief for parking. Um, you know, that's, that's their sanctuary. They, 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 they're, paying to upkeep that area for their members. So when you start opening that up to, you know, people that, you know, just come to hang out in old Weathersfield for the weekend, sometimes, you know, what's left behind you're not really happy about because it, it you know, we'd like to think that the world is utopian, it's a perfect place, but not everyone takes care of the area, especially when they're not from there. So I, I'm just asking, you know, really kindly that you guys leave this open 
Um, it was my understanding that there were two separate plans that were submitted and um, the revised one was submitted on Thursday. Um, you know, from the world where I'm from, which I explained the first time I was here, I work for a town. I currently work for a county. Um, you know, you don't just submit a plan on a Thursday and then it's supposed to be on, on an agenda on a Tuesday. That's, there's no time there for anyone to review that. I mean, we, we, we all work here. You guys all took time out of your job, time out of your day to be here. We all work, so we need time to, you know, to digest that. I'm not an engineer, and I'm sure more than half the people that are sitting here have no idea how to read an engineering map. So, you know, they may need to go ask someone that's an engineer, you know, what does this mean, or you know, all those things. So, I think that you know, you guys should leave that open, so the community could at least, you know, ask whatever questions they have. Like I said, I have a lot. When did you receive your notice about this? <laughs> My notice? I have no notice. And um, I, I, the only notices I have so far that relates to that property are for the basement window and for the windows that are being replaced. And those are all from the historic. Uh, I, have no, um, I have no notice from that there was a zoning board um, here. And so, I heard, this was just strictly by word of mouth. Actually, I was in a conversation with someone and they said, well, you're gonna be getting um, something else next to you. And I said, yeah, I got a new neighbor. And I, and I was, yeah, a new neighbor and a parking lot. And I said, the parking lot, for what? And that's how the conversation started. So I, I call uh, <laughs> Mr. Gillespie who explained to me, you know, um, yes, there is something going on. And I started to, you know, uh, quiz him and he said you know uh, there was a plan and there's a revised plan and I said well I haven't seen any of them so this is you know d please don't make a decision on this prematurely and with that being said I also want to make a point because this is something after we were here for the Masonic Hall that I thought about and as as a government employee I, I would like to also point that out at times it's not so much what you are doing, but it's at times we get applicants that show up to town halls that they put these things forward to the, to, to the department, to economic development and the planners, and they want things done right away. We all get that. You're here to please the people, but at times, you know, you got to say no. Nothing's wrong with saying no is healthy. So at times you do have to say no, and it is unfair when you guys do, when you guys put something forward to please someone else in the community, what's going to happen is the rest of the community members that aren't aware of it, we're all going to show up here and we're going to say, well, we didn't get a notice, so you guys got something to hide. Then everybody has a bad day. So, I, I mean, I, I wish and I'm praying that I don't have to come back here uh, because of something like this that it's, you know, it seems like it's being rushed. I, I'm not, th I don't think that you guys are hiding anything. I get it, but I'm just asking you guys to open it. And Tucker, I'm apologizing to you. I know you want to open your business, but we have to review this. I don't think it's fair to anybody if we, we can't review what this is and get our questions answered. And like I said, I have a lot of them, so. Thank you, could you, um, I don't think you gave it to me. I, if you did, I missed it, your address. My address is 1618 Church Street, so I'm directly Around. behind that parking Around. lot on the west. Okay? okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Hello, my name is Spiro Caloris. I'm the owner operator of Heirloom Market at Comstock Ferry at uh, 263 Main Street, Weathershield. Also live at 67 Hartford Ave. Um, I just wanted to first express, as, the, as their neighbor, Heirloom Market's support for the new, the new uh, business owner, the new property owner, um, and definitely understand the need to get your business open before the holiday season. Um, we pretty much, I know that we met with Tucker. It seems like they're going by the book for everything. I know there's challenges with the scheduling and stuff like that. The only questions I have as a neighbor business owner is um, regarding the property lines, regarding the easement 
and regarding how that's going to be handled, like specifically. Um, we went over it briefly, and they provided me with a bunch of information. It was really helpful. Um, so it's kind of, I'm kind of in the middle. I'm, I'm, we want to show complete support. However, though, I do have questions about the easement, how it will be handled, how, it'll be, um, how the signage will be, um, if it goes beyond the existing property lines, how the property will change beyond those property lines to accommodate the easement. Um, but, uh, I mean, those might be minor things um, in terms of what we're talking about today, but they're just things I'm a little unclear about. Um, but besides that, in terms of the paving, the, the use and everything, we're in complete support. Um, just want to, you know, make sure that, uh, I don't know, that I, I don't have much experience with easements and how they work. So, um, and by the way, we definitely need more signage for the one way. We, uh, we watch people who drive out the wrong way every day. Um, on the other hand, um, just as somebody that's in that area 80 hours a week at least, is that um, there are open spots on the street. Um, we, a lot of our customers do use them. When? Throughout the, the, of the night. Throughout the day. Throughout the you day, there are. We have like Saturday afternoon, for example. The weekends might be a little bit tougher. However, though, during the week, many of our customers park on the street. They don't have, we've, we've, I don't know if I've ever received one complaint about not being able to find parking. Um, it's just something to consider. I know that parking is always such a concern whenever a new business is coming in. Um, however, though, up to this point, I've never had anybody, any customer come into our business and complain about parking. Um, just something to consider. Um, I know there could always be more, but I think that there's more out there than a lot of times people give credit for. Um, other than that, that's it. Thank you. Do you get any flooding up front? We get... Um, up in that, just in like the brick area, the stuff behind it, I'm sure is... There are just a couple low spots in the front, but I think um, the, the contractor that put the pavers in in the front was a different contractor that put the pavers in the back. If you notice, they're different. The one in the front it gets overgrown with weeds. We're constantly out there from weed whacker to pulling with our hands, even blow torching. <laughs> Everything, the only thing we haven't done is poured uh, you know, harsh chemicals all over it, which we won't do. Um, there is some flooding there because there's not, enough, there's not as much um, drainage because of the type of um, construction. It's more, they kind of made a patio in the front rather mm -hmm. than a driveway. So it was, it was an error. Um, but there is some low spots out there that collects a little bit. Nothing crazy though. No, no one's walking through huge puddles. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's all it was. Yeah, really yeah, thinking. yeah. So, well, that's it. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Come join us. How are you? My name is John Jakubowski, and I'm at 221 Main Street. Um, I'd like to say it's great that Tucker is trying to do something great for the neighborhood, um, but we do have concerns, um, and it revolves all around parking. Um, Spiro said that he never has people complaining about parking. We are just the opposite. And I'm going to give you two pictures that shows parking down in that area um, where there are no parking spots. Um, and that's all the time. And we have our customers complaining every day that there's no, no parking. Um, I want some clarification. Um, I've heard there's a business, and I've heard there's two businesses going to this location. Um, if there's two businesses, an office space, and a residential, that's a lot going on. And um, the fact of the matter is, I guess, engineering is saying that you need 11 spots, and there's only eight, so you're looking at 30% less spots. Um, that's a large number, and it's not going to help the parking situation down in the Main Street area if you don't have adequate parking for everything you're trying to do with that location. You're going from a property that had no occupants to a potential of four different things operating out of it. And it's not going to change your argument, but it was a shop, office, and then residential upstairs. I'm under the impression that there's two different businesses that are going into that property. <laughs> and okay. if they can clarify that. Okay. Um, that's what I've heard, and I think one of the engineers said that, that there's going to be two separate businesses maybe. So. Yeah, there is. Um, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll ask them. Okay. So, um, so I want some clarification on that as well. And even if it is just one business, one office space in a residential, it needs 11 spots. It 
doesn't have that parking. So I think the matter should be left open until you get to discuss this in full detail um, about the impacts of downtown and what it's going to do. Right. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. You're So let me, let me just finish going around and see if there's anybody else who wants to speak for the first time. Is there anybody else in the public who wants to present something? If that come on back up, you got a question you want to ask? So I heard that there was going to be an office space on one side and that there was going to be nothing upstairs. But I, my question is, if it doesn't happen and it's not an office space that goes there, is there potential of something else going there? Let's say someone else wants this that was a retailer. Um, then what? Is it gonna, would that be permitted or is there going to be some kind of uh, restriction on what they can use it for? Because, I mean, if they're saying that they're gonna be in, it's only going to be an office space and, you know, I mean, I'm a landlord too. So when it comes to business, business is business. Um, what I tell you here at the end of the day is just what I tell you, seeing it all the time. So uh, is it going to be that it's only going to be for the office space, or if something else comes along, if the office space doesn't work out, will that be permitted to be, be there? So, so I'll let the applicant describe <clears throat> and clarify what the request is for, but to your point, once they've told us what they want, um, it stays that way without unless they come back and ask for a different scenario right so they are asking for three different uses mm -hmm. office residential and commercial and commercial right and uh but i'll I, I think i know the answer but i'm gonna let them describe it okay and and once they have that's the way the uh, approval would come and they can't change it without coming back okay, okay? thank you you bet. all right there's no other questions for the moment would the applicant come back and we'll uh Clarify that issue. Um, it seems to be the one primary question that came out of that was clarify for us the use of the four quadrants of the, I think it is four, four quadrants, right? Two yes. sides and up and down, right? Right. Um, so uh, as for the north side, the first floor will be for the store. Uh, right above it will be the apartment space for myself and, and, and my family. Um, on the north side, it will be an office space, so both we, top and you bottom. Said, you said north side, both sides. So, oh, so I, side, my, sorry. I apologize. Side, south side. South toward, south exactly. South side, right? South side. So the two well, sides toward Comstock, you just Right. You just It'll described. be for, for one office use. Uh, right. Again, if they want to greet. One tenant. One tenant, yes. One tenant who can use the bottom floor for, for you know, public use, um, whatever they need and upstairs will be for them, you know, file storage, um, just whatever they want to use that does not as, has anything to do with the public. Right. I think that's clear when you read the plans, the plans that are available on the, in, in the uh, town records at this point. Okay. One mm -hmm. tenant, two floors, mm -hmm. like an up and down. That makes a difference. Yeah. I understand yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Along that same line, it would be more helpful for me instead of you know, describing front back, west side north side etc if you identify you know per square footage how much is for each use the total square footage of the dwelling or, or the building how much is for residential how many square feet is residential how many square feet uh, office space how many square feet is uh, is commercial space on the first page of uh, the drawings which i handed to you in the lower right corner, there is a square which indicates the office use to be 1,300 square feet. The retail use would be 808 square feet. And residential use, uh, which is similar to retail use on the second floor, would be about seven 800 square feet. Okay. The residential use was not stated on that. Was not that stated table, because so. in this particular case, uh, uh, zoning requirement is not based on the square footage of residential. It just states that residential use requires two parking spaces. But you can compare the area to the retail use on the first floor. It's compatible. <clears throat> 
So the total square footage of the uh, of the building is uh, you know, approximately let's see, 1,600 plus 1,300, which brings us to about 2,900 square feet. Correct. Thank you. How'd you get this creative? You have a nine-room house here. You could technically have four or five bedrooms. We mm -hmm. always look at highest and best use, which is second to the fact of our regulations and our needs and our wants, the better of the community. But this is pretty innovative. Oh, actually, this was the use of the building before. Okay, so it's, it's, it's the exact same use, or was it modified? Right. The um, the 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 quadrant in which I which we would like to open our store used to be the cafe. Okay. Um, and above, people stayed over there. And people stayed up there. Right. And, and again, the... Other side. Thank you. South side. <laughs> south side <laughs> the other side. The south side. The south side was storage? It was, um, was for an office, and they did use the, um, the second floor for their own, you know, private office use. Okay. So then you were thinking of residential, got the residential approval, and now you're back really resurrecting things that were here in the uh, past. It was the mortgage process that... The, unfortunately caused the permitting issue. Um, if, uh, if I could actually address some of the previous questions, I think that should clear a few things up. Um, I apologize to anyone who may not have received their notice. Um, I know that we did mail them out, um, and uh, Mr. Gillespie did get the confirmation on that. Uh, we did attempt to uh, speak to you two weeks ago in order to help with the holiday season, but uh, we didn't want to rush it. Um, we, our, our um, civil engineer wanted more time to make his calculations more exact in order to, um, to provide you with the correct information. Um, so the notices were sent uh, uh, even more advanced than was required by us. The sign has been posted two weeks e earlier than necessary, so anyone walking by can see it. In fact, people, I see people looking at it all the time uh, when I'm working on the house. Um, let's see here. Um, as for the, uh, the, the former cafe, they, the parking lot only had five spaces, um, in which I thought that was how many we had to put down, to my surprise that we can fit eight. Um, but that is to the capacity of our, our yard. Um, in fact, if it wasn't through this, um, the, the, the paperwork issue, we wouldn't be here in this first place because I had taken the time to speak to Peter um, and both uh, uh, the building department and the fire marshal about being able to open my business <coughs> back then. And we, uh, at that point, because of the mixed zoning use, we were not going to need to come up and speak to you about this. Uh, we would have been able to open our store. We would have been able to move in. And, and began immediately. We were planning, uh, everything was scheduled to be closed in on October. Unfortunately, um, there were some, um, some forms we needed uh, which caused us to move our closing date till November, costing us more time, and then this also is costing us more time. Um, uh, we were informed that, you know, th through the calculations that we needed to um, adjust the easement as of Thursday. We tried to find um, the best way to communicate with Bakers Creek. Uh, unfortunately, we got the information to contact them today, so that's, uh, uh, I apologize for that. Uh, we would love to speak to you as soon as possible, sir. I didn't quite get your name. Matthew Willis. All right, thank you. Um, and um, we'll continue to speak to you to your, in your office. Um, um, I'm home every day working on this, uh, at least 12 hours. Uh, and if I'm not there, I am with 15 minutes away to any neighbors who wish to speak to me. I'm, I know that um, the heirloom market did ask me to speak to them. I, we spent at least an hour discussing the plans with them. Um, as for the flooding, potential flooding issues, Ozzy did an amazing job trying to calculate the way for the water to run forwards as opposed to the rear end, so there shouldn't be any issues with uh, anyone's uh, basements being flooded. Um, and I would love to continue to work with my neighbors to make this process as um, easy as possible. Um, were there any other questions that I failed to address? No, you remembered a couple I had forgotten. Yes. So I, <laughs> I, I wrote everything down. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I have another 
engagement to go to, so I have to leave, and I'm just very cautious about not having a fire marshal approval, town planner approval and review, and building department approval. So I apologize for having to leave a little bit early. Didn't mean to interrupt the questioning to the applicant anyway. Yeah. Along that same line, Mr. Uh, Chairman, it, in trying to uh, look at this application, it, it does seem like the proposed use is you know, consistent with the history you know, of, of this particular uh, parcel property uh, and that, it, that the use would be relatively innocuous for the neighborhood uh, and that uh, the applicant is, is uh, exerting all reasonable means to try to uh, conform to all the various regulatory requirements. However, uh, we've run into a situation where we have, it seems to me, and please correct me, uh, uh, Peter uh, or, uh, or Tom, if I'm incorrect, uh, that the application is inherently incomplete and that there are other factors that need to be addressed to make this a complete application. Um, and to be fair to all of the various interests that, uh, uh, that have a, a, uh, a right to be addressed in, within the application, uh, it would seem to me premature for this commission to act tonight to hear the, ap to hear the application. I deeply sympathize with the applicant uh, with the timing issue and, and the holiday season, which is uh, for any retail business, this is, you know, usually comprises, you know, f f fifth, you know f from 50 to 25 percent of the year's worth of business for, for a retail establishment. But, um, you know, I, I regret that. That the thing it, it seems to be rushed, but it is it is rushed, and um, um, and it would to me it seems as though what would re be required to do if we were to act on this tonight uh, and to conform to the applicant's request for some kind of temporary permit is that that's something that that's not within our jurisdiction within the. Uh, Parameters of the you know commission's authority under the zoning regulations to have a a, a temporary uh, special use permit. We'd have to act tonight uh, if we were to act to rule upon a special use permit that would be you know, applicable on infinitum. And uh, it seems to me that that in the absence of having a complete uh, application that. Uh, it would not be fair to either the applicant or uh, or the or the interests of the town to make such a uh, a ruling at this point in time. So um, I think as a consequence, I, I move that uh, uh, this matter uh, be held over for the next regular uh, meeting or such meeting as may be determined uh, where there is a complete application. Second. Is that so, so I'm glad I you believe did. that's a motion. Right? Yeah, well, it was a motion, right? And, and, and so that's fine. So we can all talk about it a little bit more. I mean, at this point, we're also down to six people. So, you know, anybody who wouldn't, if we had any problems, we wouldn't be able to pass it anyways. There are those issues as well. Uh, I, I, can't, I can't disagree. Mm -hmm. You know, it's that simple. I'm, I'm feeling like I'm sorry. It's, <laughs> it's, you know, it is incomplete. And um, to try and craft something that... You know, not the temporary use, but a craft a uh, a motion that would approve the product with so many, you know, but only if you get staff approval. And you know, I, I just don't see how that works. To let and and are you pretty much as a, as someone who has to work with the process afterwards? Are are you pretty much in agreement, as even I, though you haven't been able to say such? Yeah, as, as I said, you, you wouldn't normally act on anything without town staff, town engineer. There's drainage improvements being proposed that tie into the town's drainage system. You know, there, there are other aspects of this that are a little bit more complicated. You also heard from the uh, adjoining property owners legal counsel that that issue has not been wrapped up yet, and the plan relies on that. So you can't condition your approval on a third person's consent to something. So yes, you, you, you cannot act on it tonight. 
Uh, hopefully, um, the applicant can work all this out by the next meeting, um, which is December 18th, I think. 18th at the moment, 18th. right? Yes. Yep. I'd like to add to, to all the various uh, uh, reviews that, that should be accomplished. Uh, we still have to hear officially from the Historic District Commission as to its determination for this application, which we normally have prior to yes. this commission making a ruling. And so I'm yeah. uh, uncomfortable okay. for all those reasons. So I guess uh, my, I, my apologies. I thought that there was a letter from the Historic District Commission about this. On the parking lot uh, improvements and the handicap ramp improvements? Have you been to them already? Yeah, I, I've spoke to them earlier this week. You went to the commission and got their approval I, about the about opening the business, and they are they have they are aware of the handicap ramp and the parking lot that I'm proposing, and we are just, we are doing a formal discussion on it um, next week. Okay, so you're meeting with the HDC is next week. So Correct, but I did get um, a letter of support from the historic district commission. But they haven't adopted it. They haven't approved anything. anything. So. Correct, but that that would be over the yeah. the actual designs and, and artistic um, for. needs yeah. of it, which right. um, I, I couldn't actually implement until after I have planning and, and zoning uh, allow me to get the permits. I can't even put up the um, the drywall for the fire regulations at this point uh, until um, I have some sort of um, approval from here. Right. We, Correct. That's that's what we're all struggling with. We understand your plight. Um, you know that the permits to redo the insides of the building can't. can't and and be. again, I don't know what the scope of what you can do is, but I would be willing, just even for temporary approval, to close my doors in January when the season is more dead, in order to to um, meet the needs of the more permanent solution and approval. Which, which I think is kind of suggesting what Tom was alluding to, which is some temporary um, use, um, which is a different animal altogether. That, that's not what's being described, right? Um, so, so that's not really going to work for us either, unfortunately. I think at this point we're pretty much resolved. We have a motion uh, to, to table, or not to table, but to uh, extend the public hearing process and at, and again, our next meeting is two weeks from now, at which point the HDC, you will have had a formal approval there. Um, presumably we can get staff comments together by then. Uh, I, the next thing on our agenda is going to be a discussion about whether the 18th meeting happens. It is, you know, the week before the holiday and, and whether we'll have enough volunteers available to show up at the meeting and make it happen to begin with. Right. When, when's the historic thing come through? Next week. Next next week, next okay. week. We will have it the, the historic one we will but I you know you still have the uh, a legal easement process to go through uh, whether that can be achieved resolved and then achieved. That's what um, they gotta try to work on. Yeah, my sense is that there are three areas that need to uh, be made to be accomplished to make the application complete. One is. A uh, staff review of you know all the various final plans and specifications with reports to this commission, you know outlining their findings. Number two, uh, the uh, uh, a copy of the you know Easy. we need a, a a copy of the resolution of the historic district commission, uh, which would be the outcome of the meeting that they. Uh, are scheduled to have next week. And then the third uh, area is the uh, uh, agreement for easements, uh, shared parking use, if that's applicable, uh, those kinds of things that, that deal with uh, uh, the rights of uh, the applicant and abutting property owners to work out and have executed agreements. Uh, before this commission, so all three of those areas need, really need to be addressed before I think this commission can really uh, appropriately act in this case. And I, ju I just feel, uh, you know, terrible, uh, and I'm very sympathetic to the the applicant's plight, but I, I just don't see that we have uh, uh, any any other alternative, either. Uh, from a point of view of reasonableness uh, or uh, the authority of the commission. George? 
Um, I know Peter doesn't like to do this over and over and over again, but Peter, I need a little explanation of the parking situation there. On Saturday, I was there in the afternoon, and, uh, and I'm there on other occasions, and uh, every space was filled on the street on both sides, and they didn't use the parking lot at the church, and uh, Comstock Ferry's parking lot was not really used, about one quarter of it, maybe. Uh, and in fact, I want some thoughts from you to come at our next meeting on this, this parking matter. So, you know, without being terribly elaborate, but go back and go over it and explain how you feel. But I saw no parking spaces out there. Up and down from what, what time of day were you there? What time of day? On, on the other side, none. What time of day were you there, George? Oh, about three in the afternoon, okay. four o'clock, somewhere there. Okay. So with my uh, economic development hat on, that's fantastic news to hear. <laughs> no, I know. I so, knew you said it over and over. So, I want you to say it for the record. So for my planning hat, I'll, uh, I'll get you some. Get a little bit. Yeah, something. sure. You have done full plan the studies of that area more than once, and that's what I don't yes. want. But. Okay, we'll give you a summary. Were you shopping, or were you going and inspecting their property? Down inspecting that property. So you're part of the problem. You weren't even going to one of the stores. You know, the, the good news is, <laughs> you need to spend the, some money. In, in terms of the no, parking, the, the good news is, George, what you're explaining is that on Saturday, I'm, I'm assuming Saturday and Sunday are the peak times. Yeah, oh yeah. Now, this office space for five spaces would be probably like during the week, Monday right. through Friday, so you really wouldn't have, that's like almost you have extra five spaces right there. The point I was making was there's no special weekend, no special events going on that I could see. And it was well, still full and there were people full down there walking around. There, there's a lot of, well, there's a lot of activity right now. But, so, 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 but to, to Yolanda's point, right, and, and a comment I made before and Ryan as well, um, you know, the parking is, is something that should be, you know, you, everybody wishes they had more, but it's good news that the parking is short in supply, the businesses right? Businesses are busy, I'm and, glad. And, uh, you know, I, for one, because it's actually this different type of use, and I know that the timing will be different in many cases, that I'm, I'm less concerned about the parking when it comes to us in a final package. I'm less concerned about the fact that it's three short. But the applicant said would they would be making agreements with adjoining property owners in the area. And it would be at this Bec and, and that's and that's here. well, they are though. Actually, the adjoining property owner is Comstock, right? And they do have a you know this easement area over in any ways that gives them the, the thing. You, you know, it would help when when you do come back, right? If you can say no, I have eight on site and I have legal access to it, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and, and an agreement. We've done and, this and I also many, have many George. Let me George. May I finish? George. George. Can I can I finish? Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> So um, when you come back, have a plan for all 11 somehow, just somehow in right, in, you know, present to us how you plan on having that extra three, whether that's they'll go down the street to uh, to uh, the community center or, you know, that's that's part of your description and how, how you plan on achieving your 11, okay? Eight we've on approved, site. We've approved agreements with other property owners. This is... Not uncommon. Peter, I'm sure Peter can help you. Up on the silo steam. I want to see your business open and you do well. It just it's got to be appropriately done. <clears throat> and, and to summarize, I think Tom's was right was right on point. HDC, a full package that staff can review, and then you know the easement worked out, and and then we'll have a dialogue next time about the parking. And I and I really like I said, don't think that'll be the end of the world as long as you just present it. I got eight. I, I can get to 11. <laughs> okay. And uh, you should get there. So we have a motion and, and a second. Is everybody pretty much in agreement to that? Um, all, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? So that's six people. We'll continue it for the next time. But I do wish you'd stay around because I know we're going to have a discussion about whether the 18th and people are going to be available for the 18th. Thank you. Oh, so he'll let you know. 
um, about whether the 18th actually happens, whether staff are, are whether the volunteers are available on the 18th. That's that's our problem as we head into the holiday. I understand. I'll um I'll, I'll be in contact to ask if that meeting is uh, okay. in existence. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Next item on the agenda is a public hearing 3.2 for application number 2004-18-Z, Cody Hemelrick, uh, DeMars Electric, seeking a special permit for rooftop solar at 786. That's why you were sitting there so quietly in the corner, right? Plenty of free parking. <laughs> well, first of all, happy holidays, Mr. Chairman, Commission members. Thank you. Thank you. Um, 786 Silas Dean Highway houses uh, Lloyd's Tailoring, um, Allstate Insurance. There's a labor union and Town Oil. If you're familiar with the building, and they want to re they want to put. 27 panels on the roof that'll create about 90% of their electricity free from the Sun any questions so far no no no, no. oh, oh okay. is that the, all you I thought you were gonna idea. continue no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah yeah as long as you're recognizing mr. chairman you told okay me go ahead before, so. no you didn't all right go ahead Oh, okay. The paving site at the quality is very good there. I, I, I want to start out with a positive when I look at it. <laughs> and uh, what about the white roof fence? Is the, this, what facility you're putting in going to be behind it? Is that taken out or what? Would you explain that? And then the comment by the staff, uh, Peter, I guess, was uh, the two dumpsters at the north end of the lot between you and subway uh are you going to be willing to enclose those or are that kind of thing i have no idea about dumpsters sorry i'm the solar man oh you're just here for the solar panel? yeah oh okay george this is where they're going on the south side of the building i have a picture here that i took a few hours ago and it was Pleasure. light oh okay so the south side of the building is yeah that's in this great old town of Wethersfield, 384 years old, I know you have concerns about the historical district especially. This is a vinyl-sided building and a highway and a commercial zone, so I can't foresee any objections. To... Matter of fact, if I hold this up quick, all you see are the antenna and the power uh, lines behind the building, which is kind of ironic. So, so okay, nice. Could you take a moment to describe the profile on the roof? Uh, are we getting to the point where these days where it's so thin you can't even see it? The profile, how, how high is it off the roof? Oh, is there a second picture? It's, uh, about four inches. And uh, this is an ideal situation. This roof, you can see uh, there's no shading. It's facing south. Um, it, nobody can see these panels from the east, from the north, and from the west. It's only on the south side. I mean, it just doesn't get any better than this. I'm, I'm wrong when I started out. I apologize. I appreciate my colleagues. Any, any equipment on the outside of the structure besides what's on the roof? And if so, where is it located? Um, there will be a conduit on the side over here in the rear of the building. It comes down to a meter over here in the rear of the building. Again, not, it, visually not offensive to anybody, I would think. Rich? Is there any reflection or glare off these panels? Because actually you can see them from a long way away on the south when you're heading north. And I was just wondering if there was going to be glare or reflection into the oncoming traffic. I would think there might be uh, a minute or two in a you know, in a day where you might have a slight chance of some reflection at just a precise angle. But I doubt it. Crashing into the 
I Sweet really doubt it. This blinking sign. Sun is going to be hitting <laughs> here and bouncing off higher. I think not. Uh, you talk about traffic, right? Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it, it I, just happened that whatever one of the I really days can't. last weekend, I happened to decide to go yeah. that way to take a look at it, and you know, because of the nature of the buildings to the south of you, you can see that roof from a long way away. Yeah, and I just didn't know if there was going to be glare or reflection well that's been a bit of a concern over the years um this is the the new improved look if you will um the old days you saw panels with some blue and some purple and white and silver well these are all black so i would think this is the best there could possibly be as far as your concern about reflection is it reflective or is it is it matted is the surface matted or is it a, a clear type of it's, thing? It's got, a, it's got a clear tempered glass on it, but uh, I really don't think the reflection is, mm. is much of a factor at all. I mean, certainly you would, you would assume it wouldn't would be, be a reason to, to reject it, you know? The science behind it is that it absorbs all the energy. Yeah. Get, hopefully. Yeah, right. And there's no moving parts. And again, looking at this picture, if I would just to hold that up for a couple of seconds, all you see is the... Uh, antenna and the power lines behind a building. I mean, this is the most beautiful thing in this picture. <laughs> the <panels. laughs> is there anything positive you can say about it? <laughs> All right. George? Peter, have you talked to uh, the owner, building owner, about the uh, dumpsters? No, we, we sent them the, we sent the um, electric company that submitted the application, the staff comments, didn't he did not hear back. Um, so we could, we could take it up. At, we could take it up as an enforcement action. That depends on how you want to handle it. Yeah, it seems to me that 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 really, that issue is really completely separate from the application for the solar panels. Uh, you know, and and that it, you know that that particular issue dealing with the dumpster is, is zoning enforcement action, not not really something that uh, you know uh, is really of of concern. Uh, to uh, uh, to this commission. So. so, so we remark about this every time we have one of these. But this is a public hearing. I cannot believe it. But is there anybody from the public that wishes to speak on this application tonight? Seeing no one, move it close the hearing. Thank you, Tom. Would you second that for me, Tom? I'll, I'll second. All yes. those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. Thank Make you. a motion we approve application 2004-18-Z as submitted. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Peter, would you make Go put up your very nice Thank you. Merry Christmas. Go put up your very nice looking solar system. Yes, George. Thank you. All right. Um, other business minutes? Minutes. Harley, one, two, minutes, fine. Three. 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 Make a motion to approve. Uh, before that, um, uh, before there's a second to that, I have a correction. It's a, I'm sure it's a typo uh, on page nine. <coughs> uh, let's see. I pointed it out for already. Oh, you did? Yeah. So. Okay. But contraindicate the trend he sees? Where is it? Uh, yeah. Where is it? Uh, it's like the okay, seventh see. paragraph down. Yeah, they it trend. They should be the, the trend. No, like contraindicate is. Oh, the, the word, it's, it's the, the word they, they, and it should be the. That's all it is, right? It's yeah. just that why okay. on, on that. That needs to be uh, omitted. All right. So who uh, who made the motion? I, I um, second it. If you need well, second, I'll, I'll second it. it. I can't find it. All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. Do we have enough people who? Have... We do, right? Okay. Uh, public comments on a general matter. Tom, you got anything for us? Uh, Okay. Anything, anything for us, Peter? Just a couple things for you to be aware of. Um, you may have seen some activity going on on the auction gallery property on Church Street. Uh, we've given them um, some permits to, you know, fix some windows, fix the roof, fix some doors, that kind of thing. Uh, they do. Um, they they are working with the building 
department and the fire marshal to get a temporary um, to have a one night event there on New Year's Eve as a fundraiser in the uh, in the assembly space where the auctions actually used to occur. It is an assembly space. So um, given the history of the property, they're going to let them do that for one night. And then uh, obviously the property owners are going to be coming in with some plans uh, to renovate the building uh, probably next year. So um, the uh, owner of uh, the Putnam Park office building on Great Meadow has got a uh, has started a conversation with the DEP, DEEP, I guess I, I, I go back to my old days, mm -hmm. um, to uh, discuss making some improvements on the waterfront that to accommodate boats and slips and that kind of thing. So just uh, in case you hear something about that. Um, so we've been asked by the DEP to uh, provide some feedback, so we will do that. Uh, don't forget the Salute to Business is December 12th. If you're planning on going, please uh, sign up. Um, seats are filling fast. It's the hottest ticket in town. Um, George is going, so, you know, the rest of you should definitely go. Um, I did hand out a flyer for a meet and greet with the uh, – Town manager final candidates. Uh, that's uh, Tuesday, December 18th uh, at the Keeney Center. So uh, depending on what we discuss with your meeting, it's the same night. Um, and then I did give you some correspondence from the DOT regarding the Cedar Mountain Stone and Mulch. Their uh, permit was denied uh, by the uh, DOT, which is, uh, I haven't seen a lot of that happen. So, um, so just... So we'll have to see what, what changes they have to make to the plans that we uh, just signed the Mylars on. So, um, and then... Um, That's what I get for relying on my chairman. Just uh, for introduction purposes, uh, we have a new intern in the planning department. He is sitting in the middle of the audience. It's not the guy with the beard. Um, <laughs> it's the other guy. That's Evan King. He's been uh, helping us in the office while Denise is out. He's been very helpful. So I just want to... He wanted to come and see you guys uh, in action, so I think he, <laughs> he got, he got a, an Very iPhone tonight. Terms. So <laughs> tomorrow is his last day. <laughs> Welcome. Here we have, glad to have you with us. Uh, thank you. With thank the you staff. Glad you're here. Thanks. We do have one application uh, pending for the zone change on uh, Middletown Avenue. They would like you to meet on December 18th to have that hearing. Um, so. Uh, We'll let the discussion uh, ensue about that. Uh, obviously, um, right, they came on the Weathersville Historic Commission pretty hard, did they? Or people down there. Uh, the, there are some. There are neighbors who are uh, who feel strongly. Uh, 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 well, to this point, they felt strongly about the demolition of the two houses that are subject to this zone change. They, they. Uh, I think a building a demolition permit was just issued um, for the demolition of those houses. It did go through HDC about a year ago. Um, so he's been waiting to demolish them, but I think he's going to demolish them in the next little while before the before the weather uh, turns. Um, but he does, he has they have submitted an application to rezone those two properties to business park. So I would I would anticipate um, a, a bunch of neighbors attending, and I think the neighbors at this point are under the impression, based on the regular meeting schedule, that it would be on the 18th. So. Um, I don't know about the other members and their availability. I haven't really polled I'm everybody. Not able to so Dan, hear, Dan can't be there. Okay. Oh, you're not gonna be. You can't be involved anyway. You have a conflict. Okay. So. I can be involved in that one, but not the first one. So I can send an email out uh, in the morning and just maybe get get a head count yeah. before any legal um, notices are, are are put out. Although I ha think I have to put that one out tomorrow morning. So. Send the email right now. Well, I mean, <laughs> people may not get back to me, so that, that's the. So maybe I'll have to do the legal. We could always redo the legal notice at some point. So this is gonna be a tough night with the, um, the meeting with the perspective yep, finalists sure. with the town manager. Oh yeah, to, on top of on top of the holiday holidays. period. Yeah, I think we ought to postpone that meeting myself. Which yeah. one? That one? Yeah. The manager's meeting? No, no. Yeah. Well, that one will take care of itself because all the applicants are yeah, going to find out that their <laughs> confidentiality is blown and they haven't told their current employers that they're applying. So they. <laughs> <laughs> Unless they have like their faces shaded and their voices altered. Can we do a Wednesday meeting? Yeah, I know that won't help me. I happen, I happen to be available at the moment on the 19th. It's just getting down to, you know. We all got things to do yeah, at the moment. It's a busy time of year. Yeah, indeed. 
So what do you want to do? What? I could be available on either date, so. 18th and 19th, I don't know. All right, let's go ahead with the let's go ahead with the date, and I'll we'll encourage as many people uh, as we can to, to be there. Uh, plus, I think the folks tonight, if if they can get their act together, they they would probably want to try and. Yeah. So, is the application uh, the other application uh, critical? Time wise. Yeah. Why Why are they? No. You know, no. Just okay. Just that they finally filed it, and I, you know, I have I have a I have a tendency to believe that they that the, er, the one we heard earlier tonight won't be ready you won't have all those yeah they've got I, a, I they've got work to do right? so that could fall it. off I'd hate to have the meeting just because this particular property owner that's been you know looking at the property sitting on the property for I don't know how many years I think the first one we had tonight <laughs> is gonna it's gonna be right down to the yeah. last day they're gonna expect to be on the agenda and try and get everything worked out by that date it may take a, the day of the meeting for them to so I think I think unfortunately it's going to be one of those um, and, and it'll be a meaty discussion on top of another one yes at a time when nobody wants to be here right right be serious with them though uh, Peter and make sure they oh definitely happen. definitely and if they yeah. don't they got to put it off a couple of weeks yeah I guess I'm inclined to get, you know can we Tell, ask the applicant to not do it on that one. This one here, definitely. Yeah, there's no critical. I think, however, I think the word is already out with the neighbors, but we can. That can be all managed. Um, so this one is not critical for that date. I can reach out to them in the morning and just make sure they haven't done the you know notices and all that kind of stuff, so people don't get something in the mail and they show up that night and we're not here. It's because you know, it's already controversial. So. Um, so so is everybody comfortable with him doing that? I mean, if, if we if we ask this applicant, the one that's for next, one, Go, right, the first one to, to move off, yeah, you know, whenever January, right? I think it'd be better. But this one that we heard tonight, come back um, if they're ready, and we'll be here. You know, they do want to move along. I get it. Mm -hmm. So if we're doing that, you don't want to try and just get the other one out of the way. I I just have it. I have a well. I have a tendency to believe that this one will, will happen. And I'll be. I'm looking for a way to get the night off. Oh, 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 oh okay. Right. If they don't produce, then we don't have a meeting. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, and, um, and the two of them on top of each other. We, we don't want a meeting. Yeah, as ready. you were discussing, Peter, the, you know the various things that, that are happening and and maybe in the future, uh, something you know flashed in my mind, and that's uh, you know some that there that that. That there's authority within uh, your department or other city departments that allow for you know events that that are like one-time uh, things that don't have to come before this commission. No, well, I, I refer to it as an event, but they they uh, that space that they want to use is an assembly space. So what they do, what they want to do is have an event in the assembly space. So the use is the same. Same. Whereas tonight they came in and asked for so permission the, to change no, it all to residential. Yeah, mine, yeah, yeah. the, yeah, the it's permit a is for right. a change in use. So right. So we're not actually giving them a permit to have an event for one night. We're letting them use that space for an assembly. Yeah. Um, that's the difference. Okay. Well, you know, so goes uh, pipe dreams in the air. <laughs> Good try, though. I think the other thing too is that. We're New Year's Day, I think, is Tuesday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We may end up being meeting on Wednesday or right. Thursday anyway and having an attendance issue on that one of our own. Oh, on the first one in January, you think? Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, January 1st is a month from now. Yeah, it's a weird. I mean, this time of year, is, is it's difficult for you know, all the commission members to, to meet in assembly and of so many other commitments and activities it is what it is, it is. Yeah. yeah well that's that's basically what you know the finding of tonight is <laughs> it is what it is and it wasn't what it was supposed to be so i'll send, I'll send an email tonight before i leave here so with to the commission members to see if we can find out earlier than later so okay all right motion to adjourn second thank you all those in favor say aye aye, aye. is what it is.